In this screencast, we're going to look at how to use the question assignment type in Google Classroom. This particular topic could be very useful for you for your formative check-ins with your students, especially on Fridays during the 2020 to 2021 school year. So within Google Classroom, I'm going to click Create and then click Question. From this page, I'm then going to make sure that I have short answers selected. I could also choose multiple choice, which would be a great option for those of you that are looking to do true, false, or traditional multiple choice answers. Then I'm going to provide my students in my demonstration class a question for them to answer. Underneath the instructions, you could provide the students with additional uh, clarifying instructions for how to answer this question. For the purposes of my demonstration class, I'm going to uh, provide further details about what question type this is so that way they can understand how this looks on the student side. Okay. You can also attach additional, additional resources such as YouTube videos or links that they might need in order to answer this question. You are then able to also select multiple classes to post the question to. So this could be helpful again for those Friday formative check-ins so that way you can apply it to multiple classes and have it post all at the same time. I will want this to go to all my students for the purposes of this assignment and then I can choose what point scale it would be on or I can choose ungraded. I will choose one point just so that way I can make sure that I keep track of who has done it a little bit easier on my end. Then I can select a due date and time. So in this case I'll choose Friday. And I'll do 2 p.m. And then the topic in this case would be demonstration questions. Now, if I were using this with students, I would then choose the drop down option in the top right to choose schedule. That way, I would be able to paste, uh, post this question into Google Classroom at 9.30 on Friday morning and then have it due at the end of the day and not worry about students doing it before then. But in the meantime, for the sake of this demonstration, I'll click the ask button in order to post it to my two students that are in this class. So on the left-hand side, I have two different demonstration student accounts. So that way you can see how they can interact with each other with this one question type. So eventually the streams will update, okay? And if I want to expedite it, I can hit the refresh button and both of them will pull in the question that I posted. I can also choose the classwork page on both student sides in order to access the question from here. So I will be my top student. Okay, so this is the question. Please list one thing that you've learned this week and one question that you have. And so I can type, type in my answer. Okay, so I have answered the question and I will click turn in. Because when the teacher created the question, uh, the teacher did not let me edit my answers. This is the warning to tell me once I press turn in, I can no longer edit my submission. So I will click turn in. Now, because I've turned it in already, I can then click see classmates answers. Now in this case, the only other classmate that I see is my demonstration student account, the one that I answered that question from. On the student on the bottom part of the screen, if I click on the same question and then click view question, I can actually not see any other students' responses yet because I myself have not answered. So I can then provide an answer. Okay, and I didn't provide a question, didn't really do the assignment, but I'm going to press turn in and I'll get the same error message. And this time I can see students, see classmates answers and I can see the response that I provided in the top as well as my own, my own response. And then um, I can respond to my classmates posts and they will see that I provided a reply as well as uh, the other student in the class. Okay. So that works out pretty well. Big feature there is that you can't actually see classmates answers until you have done it yourself. So let's go back to the front page of our Google Classroom in our two demonstration pages and let's create another question type for uh, in our classwork. So we're going to create another question. This one I do not want students to reply to each other. So I want to see what that's going to look like.
So now the question has been asked and I can come back on my student side of the page to see what the new question is. And as we wait for that to come in, one thing that I'll point out as a bonus is that on the student side, and we can see it down here on the bottom, the question that I already answered is light gray and the question that I have not answered is dark gray. So that's a nice little tip to pass along to your students that the color of the icon in front of the item that is assigned does change based on whether the student has completed the assignment or not. So I'll start with my top student. So what did you struggle with this week? Okay, and reminder, this is a short answer and students cannot reply to each other. So reply to it. Same warning pops up because again, I didn't allow students to edit their question after submission. So I've provided this answer. And my two other options that I have on this page are to post private comments, which would be only to the teacher, or class comments that would post to the rest of the class. And as the other student, if I were to come in here and click view question, I only see my own answer field. I don't see a way to see my classmates' answers, but I couldn't see that under the first demonstration either. So let's just give this a shot. Okay. Then I can click turn in. And then as I scroll around, I can actually not see any other students' work. And even if I were to hit refresh on both of these pages, then I do not see any of my classmates' answers. So that's how you use the short answer question and how you can allow students to reply to each other or not. That keeps it a little bit more private if you choose for them not to be able to reply to each other. And then the final example that I'll provide for you um, I'll do a simple true false, but you should have your bearings on this on this at this point. So I'll post it as a demonstration question. I'm not going to let students see the class summary because I want the answer to be private. But if I saw if I allowed students to see the class summary, then everyone could see what the responses are. So I'll say that this is a multiple choice question. Okay, and then I can click ask. And then the same procedure that we just did we'll do on this page. So today is Friday. Unfortunately, it is not. So I'll click false in this page and click turn in because I cannot change my answer once I submit it. I'll submit the answer on my demonstration second student as well. So both of these are submitted. I cannot change my answer on either of them, nor can I see what other students have answered. Now, if I wanted to repeat the same kind of question, okay, then I can choose multiple choice. Okay, and then choose the same topic. I'm going to flag this as a multiple choice. Okay, and then I will ask the question. Again, coming back in my two demonstration students on the left hand side. And then I have a new question. So if I hit show, it'll show up right here. So if I go into my classwork, then I can see what day of the week is it. Okay. And so for my top student, I'll say that it's Wednesday. And I'm going to click turn in. And then for my Friday class or my bottom student, I'm going to click that it's Friday. And I'm going to click turn in. And because I allowed students to see the summary, I see a graphical interface here. So I see that I answered Friday and they and it has one vote. And then someone else has voted, one other person has voted Wednesday, and that was not the answer that I provided. So that's how you use questions within Google Classroom. And I hope it helps. Let me know if you need any assistance.